Right, welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. Happy Sunday. Let's see. Just making sure. Cool. 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 Right? Awesome. Right. There you go. Yeah, how's, how's your day so far? Right, how's your day so far? Tell me. Cool. Let's have a look here. Okay. I'm streaming both on Instagram, right, and Facebook, right, and LinkedIn, right. Thank you, Crack Gang. Uh, thank you. The, uh, welcome, the Dream Nurse. Today is going to be exciting. Please invite your friends. There's so much to cover today. Krista, welcome. Krista, welcome. It's going to be exciting. Right, so how, how was your day? How's your day been so far? Tell me, right? Nurse Q, welcome, welcome. How's your day been so far? That's awesome. That's awesome. Right, there's somebody joining from, um, right, from Facebook. Welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> right, let's see who else is joining. Please invite your friends. Right, invite your friends. So happy Sunday to everyone who's joining. O H H E M G, welcome. Today is going to be exciting. Yes, Alexis, it's been a peaceful day. Tell me, how's your day been? If you've had a great day, please just say, uh, Caramel Princess, welcome. Thanks for joining. Right? Awesome, awesome right next q says hello jerry great at work that's awesome is anybody joining from 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 work uh, class class say ole welcome that's awesome right it's going to be exciting today we have so much to cover we have so much to talk about right so i'm just going to start real quick here just because of our time <laughs> awesome right today um i'm going to talk about tax write-offs tax write-offs so i'm going to start by asking everyone how 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 is the year starting for you right so we are in 2024 I think the most important thing everybody should be doing is to write down their goals, right? You need to have clear goals because if you do not have goals, trust me, there is nothing to achieve, right? If you do not have a plan, then that's a recipe for failure. You need to have clear goals that are written down and that are achievable, right? Um, just because if you do not have goals, you are not helping yourself, right? You need to have clear goals written down. I have written down my goals for 2024. It's going to be exciting. I'm trusting God for a wonderful year, year unlike anyone before, right? Awesome. So one of the, the other thing I'm going to say today that you are not competing with anyone or against anyone, right? you need to there's nothing wrong with having a role model never compete with anyone welcome suba su, sugabuga right yes 
So your goal should be the should, you should strive to be the best version of yourself for 2024. You need to identify the areas that you messed up last year. There is nothing wrong with messing up. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes. It's fine, right? But your goal should be to learn from your mistake and grow. From your mistakes and grow. Tennis, tennis speak, welcome. Learn from your mistakes and grow. Just try to become the best version of yourself, right? So perfect. So we're going to start now. What? So I'm going to start by nurse, nurse K, welcome. So today we have many uh, health professionals, right? Everybody wants to start a business. You see, I always say that the tax code was written for business owners, right? You are a W-2 income earner. You are basically on the worst tax code. That's just how it is. So you need to get yourself out of that, that situation. The biggest bill of every household is taxes. The biggest bill of every household is taxes. Actually, yesterday I was thinking about it and I came to realize that probably every household spends about 40% of their income on taxes. Now think about it. You have, um, you have federal taxes, um, you have state taxes. For those of us living in tax-free states, <laughs> right, we don't have uh, state taxes. Right? You have federal taxes, you have state taxes, you have real estate taxes, taxes you have social security you have medicare all of those get deducted from your from your, uh, your 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 income right and then you have all the taxes sales taxes you want to buy a car you pay taxes um if you are using and then you have um um taxes on apple taxes and all those crazy things it's absolutely ridiculous the average household spends about 40 percent of their income on taxes one thing wealthy people have understood is that they need to they position themselves in the 3% club, right? If you look at the top 10 wealthy people, right, the world building aren't welcome. If you look at the, the, the top 5 or top 10 wealthy people, you realize that they pay about 3% in taxes. So you have to position yourself strategically to pay less taxes, right? Now, for those who are joining here for the first time, I'm going to introduce myself. So my name is Jerry Pani. I've been an accountant for 18 years. I'm a fellow charter certified accountant. I have a master's in accounting and finance. I also have an MBA, right? I've reached the pinnacle of my career as an accountant. And I love uh, taxes. Taxes is my passion. And for those who do not know, um, have so many clients. My biggest clients are making over $10 million, but I have other clients making half a million, quarter of a million, including doctors, nurses, all and gas engineers, pharmacists, and so on. Is it a welcome? So I love to talk about taxes. Now, you have to position yourself, right, to ensure that you reduce your taxes just like wealthy people do. Because if you don't reduce your taxes by starting a business and by using powerful tax strategies like I do and what I do for my clients, Uncle Sam is going to gladly take your money and they will use that money to give to poor people, people who don't want to work, and they're going to use that money to fund wars, right? <clears throat> we have to be very careful. If you don't do this for yourself, nobody is going to do it, right? <laughs> so it's crazy right here. It's absolutely crazy. You have to have a business. You have to have a business. If you did not have a business in 2023, your goal for 2024 should be to have a business. Start something. Whether it is a um, 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 selling on, on Amazon, selling on eBay, or whether it is um, a, a laundromat, whatever it is, get started. Whether it is Airbnb or whatever, just do something. Whether it is photography, I'm just giving you ideas here. Whether it is writing, you know, writing uh, uh, things for people, whether it's ebooks and all those things, there is no reason why nobody should have a business right so that's why we need to talk about these things today so today we are going to talk about tax riders because tax riders are really for business owners right so we are now in season two of my let's talk about tax series for those who have been following me last year was season one 
this year is season two right um season one we cover the basics of of, of taxes things that everybody need to know we spoke about schedule a schedule b schedule c schedule d and all this kind of stuff schedule e these are things that these are the basics that everybody needs to know right so now two we are going to focus more on business owners right the, the vision for this year is that i'm going to take you guys on that journey right you guys are going to learn powerful tax strategies that a lot of my wealthy clients are using and you tax strategy tax planning is not just for wealthy people right don't, don't get deceived everybody can benefit from it so i'm going to take you guys on that journey so that you can take advantage of the tax code just like wealthy people do are you with me so that's that's what we're going to do this year it's, it's going to be crazy i i it, there, there's so much to talk about there's, there's so much to talk about. and one of the things i'm going to say is that if there's any specific topic that you want me to talk about feel free to dm me feel free to dm me right so what is a tax writer i'm going to make it so simple right um taxes is my passion i'm a tax strategist um, you know, I've extended my business to include tax planning. Tax planning is basically strategies that wealthy people use to pay 3% in taxes. That a dope gem welcome, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to make it simple for everybody. What is a tax write-off? Because when I, I when I talk to a lot of my mentors, uh, you know, my mentees and many people, people will ask me, Jerry, what is a tax write-off? So I'm going to make that simple for you today. A tax write-off is basically a business expense that goes on to your business return if you are a depending whether you're a schedule c or whether, whether you're a schedule c or 1099 or whether you are a c cup or an s cup so it's an expense that you can write off it's an expense that you can use to reduce your sales revenue that is what a tax write-off is all about right so let me break make it simple again any expense you you have incurred because of your business is a tax write-off now i'm going to rephrase it in another simple way because people always ask me this question how do i know what is a tax write-off how do i claim a tax write-off it's crazy right <laughs> these things get me excited so a tax write-off think about it this way let's say that you are, i have many nurses health health professionals joining today let's say that you have a job and then you have a side hustle maybe an airbnb or maybe a, a, a photography business or maybe a hair salon the simple way to look at this is this ask yourself the question would i have incurred this expense if i did not have the business so if I only did my job, would I have incurred this expense? If the answer is no, then that expense is a tax write-off. So if you did not have that business, would you have incurred the expense? If you would not have incurred that expense, if, you've incur if you are incurring that expense because of your business, then it is a tax write-off. There are so many tax write-offs that we are going to talk about a few today. Okay? Now, awesome. So, Internal Revenue Code Section 162 allows deduction, deductions for ordinary and necessary or business expenses paid or incurred during the course of a taxable year. Again, once more, I want to join those, I want to thank those who are, who are joining. Please share the video once it's, it's over, share and like. That I'll, 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 I'll appreciate that. And if you have if you have friends who are business owners, please should, you know, just give them my information, please, so that I can help, help them reduce their taxes, right? As a tax strategist, generally, my ID plan is anybody making over $150,000, you know, up to over $10 million. Those are my ID clients or anybody who has a tax liability of at least $30,000, right? Those are the ID clients. So if, 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 if you are getting there, it's not a problem. I'm going to support you on that journey. Are you with me? So if you look at Internal Revenue Code Section 162, it says that what? The expense has to be ordinary and necessary, right? 
so you have to understand that the tax code is there for guidance now the question is that who determines whether an expense is necessary for my business so let, let's start with ordinary Ordi what does ordinary mean right it, it, it means that what okay i am an accountant right i'm a tax strategist i'm a finance expert am i expected to have certain expenses right maybe flying to dubai every single uh, uh, once a year right yes as a business owner as a tax strategist i have many people that i mentor i can tell my mentees let's fly to dubai on on a trip or i can take my 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 my, my board of directors and fly on a retreat right so that expense is expect is expected so i can claim that trip to dubai as a tax write off right but now if you are let's take the case of if you are a um let, let me let me let me take uh, which example let's say you have a um okay let, let's say you are if a, a, a photographer right if you are a photographer the government does not expect you to spend money on certain expenses right now generally photographers will be expected to be traveling all over the us and probably all over the world so if you are a photographer it's so easy for you to fly to dubai take pictures and claim that trip as a business expense it's so easy for you to fly to to um, to europe to africa right uh, to southern americas and claim that trip as a business expense because it is expected that as a business owner uh, as a photographer you can literally travel all over the world as a matter of fact photography is a good side hustle if anybody likes photography here trust me make it one of your businesses is one of those things that can allow you to travel all over the world and claim it as a tax write-off. <laughs> That's crazy, right? You're going to thank, thank me today. So, Internal Revenue Code Section uh, 162 allows, it talks about ordinary. Now, what does necessary mean? Necessary. Do I really need, is, is it necessary for my trade? Do I really need to spend on this thing, right? Just break, make it simple. Do I need to spend on this thing, right? Okay, if, if I have a company and I'm flying to Dubai, right, by myself, so I'm taking three of my employees, is it necessary? So that's what it means. So you have to consider, do, do, do three people need to fly to Dubai for that business trip? That's what necessary means. Now, you have to understand that the IS is there to, 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 to state the tax code, which is 162, right? Who makes the determination whether it is necessary for my business? I make that determination. And that's exactly how wealthy people use the tax code to advantage, right? You have to determine, is this, is this expense necessary for my business? Yes. If I buy a, um, like, I'm going to give you a, 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 a good, good example. Like recently, I, I bought one of these 3D headsets, right? to improve efficiency in my workflow. Yes, for me, that's a tax write-off, right? If I buy um, a box, you know, it's a, a, some maybe um, equipment, you, you can claim those as a tax write-off, but you have to be able to prove to the IS this is necessary for your trade, right? Awesome. So now I want us to talk about another important element. I want us to talk about capital expenses versus revenue expenses because i came to realize that many people don't talk about this right what is a capital expense this is absolutely important a capital expense for your business or a capital expense it's something that improves the value of an asset that is a capital expense generally you are going to um oh 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 amg you're welcome um right so i'm going to answer your question thank you so okay just to answer your question it shows oh emg i can pronounce it says can you claim tax write-offs whilst you're still starting your business the answer is yes right so when you're starting your business you have what we call formation cost and organization cost you have business startup costs. These are all startup costs, right? 
So when you are about to start a business, all the, the expenses you've incurred because of, of that um, um, project are tax write-offs. So if you had to do um, 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 marketing, if you had to do research and development, if you bought maybe books to read, you know, and all those kind of stuff, you can claim all those expenses, right? Just, these are all startup costs. You have startup costs and organizational costs, right? So going back to where we were now, like I was saying, capital expenses improve the value of an asset. And these expenses are not, ex these, these capital expenses are not expense. They don't go through the profit and loss account. These expenses are depreciated. You have to be careful, right? I've seen people messing things up here. Now, what is a revenue expense? A revenue expense, these are expenses that go through your profit and loss account. So you expense these ones, these expenses, right? So that's the difference between capital expenses and revenue expenses. Uh, uh, Dylan, welcome. So we've gone through, for those who are just joining, we've, we've gone through what is a tax write-off. We've gone through internal revenue section 162, which um, really allows deductions for all the necessary trade expenses. Now, I want to differentiate between tax credits and tax deductions right we have to be very careful because many people get misled right here now tax credits generally will reduce the amount of taxes you owe by dollar so for example if your tax liability is ten thousand dollars and you have a tax credit of five thousand dollars your tax liability is going to be reduced from ten thousand to 5,000. 10,000 liability minus 5,000 tax credit. Your new tax liability is going to be, your new tax position is going to be $5,000. That's what uh, tax credits do. They reduce your tax liability by the dollar, right? Tax deductions, on the other hand, do not reduce your tax liability by the dollar. So let's say I have $10,000 in tax write offs right it does not mean my tax liability is going to be reduced by ten thousand no what that means is that you are going to claim it on your um on your schedule c or whatever right and then generally and then your 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 your, your tax your tax position so your your income is going to be reduced by your taxable income is going to be reduced by ten thousand dollars so if you have ten thousand dollars in business expenses or tax write-offs and let's say your tax your tax bracket is 20 percent then the net position so right so ten thousand so ten thousand right times point two so if you have ten thousand as a tax write-off and your tax your effective tax rate is 20 percent then you are going to get two thousand dollars as tax reduction right so this is where many people on, on social media mislead so many people, right? Welcome, Mika. Welcome, Kate. So that's it. It's, it's so important to understand these things, right? So we're going to look at um, the different types of, um, the common types of, 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 of tax, tax write-offs, right? So that they should not come as, nobody should be blind. We have to be, all, we all have to be educated. So I'm going to go through the common types of business expenses that anyone can claim, right? Now, the first, the most simple business expense that anyone should be claiming is your cell phone. Your cell phone. Your cell phone. Why do I say that? Because I do not know any business that can run without a cell phone, right? Everybody should be claiming their cell phone as a tax write-off, right? everybody should be claiming their cell phone as a tax write-off now there are there are other things around the room there but i'm not going to go into the details right generally ideally you want to claim a portion of it so if you have one cell phone which you're using for business use and private use let me just help someone here if you have a cell phone you're using for business use and private use let's assume that you're paying 200 dollars a month on that phone right let me bring up my calculator so let's say you're paying $200 a month for that phone time, 12 months, that's $2,400, right? So if you use that phone 80% for business, right? Then 
you are going to claim 80% of 2400 right? And that gives how much? Let's see. It is $1,920, which goes onto your tax return. The Schedule C or your um, 1120 or 1120 is depending whether you're an S corporation or a C corporation, right? So that is how it works. Now, if you have, um, it, it becomes a bit more complex if you have multiple businesses like i do and then you have uh, you know just one or two cell phones i have two cell phones right for those i love that these are the best businesses so i have these phone phones for my businesses right again if you buy a phone like this this phone is about two thousand dollars if you buy this your business pay for it straight away it's a tax write-off right so if you buy a handset outright um and you, you 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 claim it as a business expense. I I pay for my fo phone uh, through my businesses, right? You claim it as a tax write-off. So cell phones and and all those kind of so these are things that are so easy to to claim on your tax return, right? So we're going to go through other um, the next expense that is so easy and this is crazy. This one is so easy. Mileage, business mileage, right? Mileage is so easy. Now. <laughs> right so so but so the booger says she has a an extra phone she'll use for business so mileage is so easy now this is a good news for 2023 the rs allowed you to claim 65.65.5 cents per mile right but for 2024 67 cents this is crazy now let me let, let me let me tell you guys something this is absolutely crazy right now when you have a car you can actually claim you can there are two things you can do you can claim actual expenses of of, of uh, on the car or you can claim mileage right now generally if you are claiming actual expenses that would include um depreciation of the car that would include other expenses like um you know expenses for running the car um you know including gas including repairs uh, car insurance and all those kind of things now think about this i want you to you see but you have to be careful before you want to use actual expenses versus a uh, mileage you have to be careful because you have to speak to whoever does your taxes if they are tax strategies i don't know right but this is what i recommend you always have to compare which one is going to be beneficial to you if you are claiming this thing is going to take longer than I expected. Now, see what to do, right? Now, if you are claiming, so if if you are claiming actual expenses, you can claim, you you can claim, um, um, you know, section one seven nine depreciation on the car. So you have to be careful because you see, wealthy people do things the way wealth wealthy people do things in terms of tax benefit, but everybody else, middle class, broke people don't care about that you have to be intentional the way you think because if you want to use the system to your advantage you have to be intentional right if you are buying a car you don't just buy cars randomly right? i have goals to achieve so you you have to i whatever i do i always think from a strategic tax perspective right so if you have a car right and you're claiming actual expenses you need to know why you're claiming actual expenses you should only claim actual expenses okay let me just help somebody here there are strategies that you can use to accelerate depreciation on the car right and then once the car is fully depreciated after the useful ex economic life you can get rid of the car and use and get another car for the business to continue claiming depreciation but let me show you guys an easy way right today is one of the things today is how can I get ten thousand dollars as tax write-off? Now it is so easy. It is so easy. Remember, if you are driving from your state to another state, who determines whether that trip is a business trip? Like I drove from 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 Houston to Florida to see one or two clients and for an event, <laughs> right? The IS does not care whether my family members were in that car. Are you with me? <laughs> this is crazy. So I basically drove for over 2,000 miles, right? So think about it. Let me show you guys how you can easily get $10,000 $10, in tax write-off. 
for 2024 right now it is 67 cents per mile right so let's say that you make <laughs> this is crazy let's say you make 20,000 miles every year right let's do 20,000 miles right times 0.67 that's 13,400 miles as a tax write-off on your tax return so imagine that you do this every single year for the next 50 years until you die can you see how you can easily get over ten thousand ten thousand dollars in tax write-off just because you have a car so in this case this is a different strategy because some people like to change cars but if you are one of those that you, you don't like to change cars then you might be better off claiming mileage now let me let me emphasize something when you have a car if you start claiming actual expenses on that car you cannot go back to mileage right but once you if you start claiming um mileage in year one in year two and the subsequent years you can alternate between actual expenses and mileage again these are all tax strategies right you, you have to talk to whoever does your your taxes that is how you can use a system to your advantage right but an easy way to get thirteen thousand four hundred that over 10,000 every year is to claim over 18,000 um 18,000 dollars in 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 a business miles. So let's do for example um if you want to get 10,000, right? You have to be doing about 15,000 miles per year. So for 2024, if you want to get $10,000 as a tax write off on a business trip, you just have to make 15,000 miles. Now it is so easy to make 15,000 miles. Just drive to different states, right? There's nothing wrong with driving. You know, you drive to a state where your, your family members are and you claim that as you talk to, look, you can go to a state where your family members are and, and, and look for business in that state and you claim that trip as a tax, as, as tax write-off. Are you guys with me? So these are easy expenses. I'm going to talk about another easy um common business uh, deduction we have home office deduction right home office deduction is basically if you have an office in your home it's easy to claim you you can you you you, you claim working having that office in your home because when you have an office in your home of course your utilities are going to go up right so there are two ways to calculate the deduction you can use the simplified method or the standard me method right so I usually call the, 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 the standard method the actual expenses method, right? Simplified method means you basically get $5 per square footage of the house and the maximum square footage is 300. So which means that if you are using the simplified method, right, the maximum you can get is 1500 as a tax write-off. Unfortunately, I, I never use simplified method because it, it is not beneficial to me i always use the actual expenses the standard method which is the actual expenses method are you guys with me here now i'm going to go through a couple of things that people don't know just cover a couple of one or two, couple of expenses, and then we are going to round up right and give an opportunity so i'm going to talk i'm going to talk for about three four minutes and then i'll give five minutes for questions and then i round up right now the next thing we are going to talk about is business gifts. The tax code says that well, you can only give $25 per person per year, right? So those who are claiming, those who are giving $100, $200, $300 as business gifts, you are, you are just breaking the law right now. But there are all that, there are tax strategies that you can use to go around that law. Are you guys with me? So remember, it's, it's, there is, most, most people don't understand the difference between a tax strategies a cpa and a tax preparer so let me just make it easy for you because many times i've asked people do you know the difference between a tax strategist a cpa and a tax preparer they say no so let me help you guys here we need to make it very clear the tax preparer's role is to prepare and file your taxes so when you go to a tax preparer you give them your documents their role their obligation is to prepare and file your taxes now, whether you owe taxes or not, you cannot blame them because their role is to enter the data based on the information you've given them and file your taxes. 
So that is the role of the tax preparer. Now, what is the role of a CPA or an accountant? CPAs or accountants are tax accountants. I have been an accountant, a chartered certified accountant for over 18 years, right? As an accountant, we are tax accountants. What does that mean? Like you guys saw, I read the tax code to you. I tell you that the tax law says that you can claim 67 cents per mile, right? I tell you that the tax code says that what? You can only claim $25 per, uh, per person per year as a gift. That is the role of the accountant. Accountants are not tax strategists. So an accountant would, would, would file the taxes based on the tax law. They are there to ensure that you don't break the tax law. Are you guys with me here? I've been an accountant for 18 years. That is what I have been doing for the last 18 years. But now I have expanded my services to include tax planning. So I'm a tax strategist now. What is the role of a tax strategist? When I come as an accountant, I'm going to tell you that okay, business gives is six twenty-five dollars per person per year, right? And as a tax strategist, if you give one hundred dollars to 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 one thousand or, or maybe one hundred people, right? My role as a tax strategist is to show you loopholes how you can structure an expense so that you can now claim it as a tax write-off. Are you guys with me here? That's the difference between a tax strategist, a CPA, and a tax preparer. So don't go blaming. I get fed up when I see these things. Don't go blaming your tax preparer for your high tax liability. Their role is not to show you the tax loopholes. That is not their role. Don't go blaming your tax preparer for, for having a huge tax liability. You are not paying them to give you tax strategies. You are paying them to prepare and file your taxes, right? Now, don't go blaming your CPA if he does not show you all these tax loopholes because CPAs are tax accountants, right? We are tax accountants. Our role is to ensure that we, we don't break the rule, right? But when my clients come to me, I show them as a tax strategist. So I need to make it clear. I have a separate business for tax preparation and I have a, I have a separate business for, for, for tax planning. Right, they are totally separate businesses because I have separate, diff I have different clients. My tax planning clients are separate. Right, these are people making over one hundred fifty thousand dollars to millions of dollars. And for my tax preparation business, these are everybody can become my client. Are you guys with me? But uh, going forward, at some point, you know, I I'm, I'm restructuring my business so that we can help more people. But again, for those who are just joining. Um, if you if you have business owners, if you have friends who are business owners, please pass on my information to them. My, everything is on my bio on Instagram or Facebook. Just click the link there. My business card is electronic. Share it with your friends, please. So for my tax planning business, I need to make it clear. My ID client is anybody making over one hundred fifty thousand dollars to tens of millions of dollars, or anybody who has a tax liability of over thirty thousand dollars because tax planning is, is a different ball game right, right here wealthy people use tax strategies like myself to reduce their taxes to three percent and zero percent right but everybody else rich people use cps and tax preparers so you have to decide where you fall and one of the things i'm going to say is that where you are today does not determine where you're going to be tomorrow right so even if you are not my tax planning client today don't worry, I'm, I can help you get to that level, right? So please share my information with your friends. Uh, it is going to be the, the, the best form of, of flat of, of flat trip for me is, is referral. If you love me, um, just give me referrals, then you're my friend, right? Now, so I'm going to um, just talk about some few more expenses. Um, so we have uh, advertising, you know, marketing, advertising. You have things like commissions. There's a bunch of expenses, right? So I'll just kind of go through these expenses. You have accounting fees, consultancy fees, but you know, if, if depending on where you are, you, you can pay for some some exams, books. You know, um, if you're buying a computer for your office, if you're buying a, a monitor, like I have a 45 inch inch a curved monitor, um, so wonderful. You can buy you know office equipment, printers, and all those things. Uh, legal and professional fees. You can claim all of those. 
um again there are specific rules for 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 for, for, for meals like i said an accountant will tell you the rules for meals but as a tax strategist i show you the loopholes to go around these rules so that you can clear 100 percent of the meals this is crazy right <laughs> i love this so you should pay for software you know um taxes and all this kind of thing parking and tolls right again these are all things that you can claim if you are paying a consultant you can claim it as a tax write-off if you have a mentor who is helping you with your business and you pay the mentor ten thousand dollars yes claim the ten thousand dollars as a tax write-off right and um, if you pay the mentor fifty thousand dollars which which i don't know why people do that right then claim claim the claim the fifty thousand as a tax write-off right so those are some of the most common expenses that you know people can claim now you also have if, if you are into airbnb and all these things right now a lot of people do airbnb arbitrage right you have to know that there are pros and cons of using that strategy you know the pro is that the pro is that you have a business right and that will go on your schedule c right but unfortunately when you have when you're doing the rental arbitrage you're going to lose out on certain on certain tax strategies right you're going to lose out on depreciation you're going to lose out on the short-term uh, rental loophole so you lose out on some of those things so anybody who's doing um, airbnb arbitrage right here i'm going to encourage you your goal should be to become a property owner right so um i'm going to stop here and entertain one or two questions and then we are going to call it a day it's, it's, oh, sorry about that. it i thought i was going to finish in in 30 to 40 minutes but i'm not doing too much right so um let's see who has any question that they want to ask so i'm going to entertain questions for um welcome those who are just joining uh, i'm going to entertain questions for the next couple of minutes uh, for you know for, for those who have questions so if you have any question right now please ask this is your this is your time to shine <laughs> right so let's see so who has enjoyed so far if if you've enjoyed so far just put it in the chat there please just say just say thumbs up just say yes 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 you've been enjoying so far what what we are covering or what we've covered right if you've been enjoying say yes right it seems nobody is nobody is 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 enjoying the session right i'm i'm not seeing any comments right okay okay i can see people saying yes right awesome i love that i love that now who let, let, let's see who has question who has a question who has a question on tax write-offs we are talking today about tax write-offs right right so somebody says oh i can't pronounce that oemg right she says that how does it work as as far as when you're starting your business and not making money is there a time um i'm not sure what the question is but we're going to see so if you okay let me make it let me make it simple let's say you start your business in december right like i started one of my businesses in december it cost me over thirty thousand dollars to get started right so which means i what? i start the business and i started around around let's say i started around december as an example right and i've made a loss of thirty thousand dollars now that thirty thousand dollars is going to be a business loss and that is going to go against my ordinary income right so because i have many businesses what is going to happen is that um the loss from one business is going to offset the profit from the other business right so just to answer your question right um if if, if it, what, whatever expense you've incurred in your business whether it is doing um, um, research and development whether it is marketing whether it's printing business cards whether it's website getting um, social media campaigns and all those things and um, paying for mentors and all those things yes you can claim all those expenses even if you make thirty thousand dollars in loss trust me the IRS would not audit you right you have to be careful you have to make sure that you have evidence of paying these expenses don't go and falsify your record so if you have effectively um, spent thirty thousand dollars to start a business you can claim it as a tax write-off 
are you with me you can claim the full amount as a tax write-off right and that if you have a, a, a job for example that would go to reduce your 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 um your w2 taxable income and then you are going to uh, is going to reduce your taxes right does that answer your question oh emg you right okay yes so that that answers your question great so let's see Sugabuga says, what are your recommendations of cards for business credit, right? Now, so, so if, if, if you, okay, this is how I see it. When, now, the first thing I'm always going to say is that if you have a business, I would always recommend use the top banks. Bank of America, I bank with Bank of America. I've never had any problem with them. Uh, I started one of my businesses. They gave me eleven thousand uh, dollars for credit card, right? That was as soon as the EIN got got uh, the EIN was out. Actually, they were calling me, <laughs> right? They were calling me and asked me, "Do you want a business credit card?" I said, "Of course, yes, I do," right? And they gave me eleven thousand dollars. Now, for another of my business, you, you you you. So I always recommend use the big bank, right? Always start with your bank because. Remember, you have a reputation, you have that history with your bank, especially when you're, you're starting a new business. And you also have to make sure that your credit score is good, right? You have to make sure that your credit score is good. Because if your credit score is bad, <laughs> then you just shot yourself in the foot right there. Nobody's going to give you credit card, right? Now, some people do get business grants and all those business funding and all those things. I don't do it. It's not my expertise, to be honest. I've never used any business grant or anything like that, right? So uh, for any of my business, I've never done it, right? So, um, but some people are specialists in business grants. You can check with one of those guys, right? But again, for business credit cards, like I said, if you are just starting your business, I would always recommend go with your bank first. And if it's a small bank, you can still try. Now, if you have an existing business, then I would recommend, um, where is that my credit card? I would recommend um, Amex. Amex, yes, use Amex. Amex is good. You can use Amex to to apply for for a credit card. I applied with Amex for one of my for for one of my businesses, and I think they gave me uh, how much over forty thousand dollars or something like that. Yes, yes. So I, I think about thirty thousand dollars, something like that. So you can try. You can try with Amex, but you have to make sure that you have um, you have a I used Amex. I already had an Amex credit card. When I applied for, um, I applied for three credit cards at the same on the same day. <laughs> this is crazy, right? So um, applied for three credit cards the same day with Amex. I got approved for all three credit cards. So you have to make sure that you have a good credit credit score. You see, uh, so I applied and they gave me over uh, thirty thousand dollars. You know, which I used to start my business. Remember, wealthy people leverage debt. You should not be afraid of debt. You have to understand that you never want to use your hard-earned money to do things, right? And I'm going to help someone here. Why do you always want to use debt? Robert Kiyosaki, he, he said he's, he has over, what is 1.9 billion in debt, right? He's not crazy. Wealthy people leverage debt. Why? Because when you have a loan, for example, or, or a credit card, the interest charge on that credit card is a tax write-off. Are you guys with me? Remember, wealthy people always think from a tax write-off perspective. Right. Sugabuga says she heard Amex doesn't do a new inquiry each time you go to them. Um, right. When I applied for, for Amex, it didn't, well, a hard inquiry didn't show on my, on, on my experience score, right? Even when I got my credit card with, with Bank of America, a hard inquiry didn't show my credit score. So but you have to be careful. If you have a bad credit score, your objective now should be to work on your credit score. I've been advising people on credit credit scores for, for, for donkey years. I have strategies to push yourself to over 800, right? Yes, interest, interest accrued on, a, on, a, on a, a business credit card or any business loan or any form of debt is a tax write-off. And that is, remember, in, when you're in business, you need expenses. So do, you, you, you should be looking for tax write-offs. That's why wealthy people use, 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 use debt. 
because they need the tax write-off. Are you guys with me? <laughs> you need the, the tax write-off, so you should not be afraid of that. Wealthy people leverage other people's money, the bank's money, because the interest accrued on that credit card is a tax write-off. So let me just help someone right here. If you have an LLC, okay, I'm just helping someone here. If you have an LLC, right, and you, you are not able to have a credit card because you have a poor credit score, this is a strategy that I would recommend. You can use a personal credit card that is dedicated to that business. So the card needs to have a zero balance. And you only use that credit card for that specific business. Any interest accrued on that credit card becomes a tax write-off for you. Who got it here? Who got what I said? Who got what I said? Who got what I said right here? Who got what I said? Who got what I said? Who got what I said? Right, who got what I said? So that's a strategy that you can use if you have, if you are struggling to get a business credit card, right? You can use that strategy, but you have you don't have to commingle your funds. You have to avoid commingling funds, right? Awesome, awesome. Can I rent my home for my business? For example, if I'm filming at my residence for work. Now, there is actually a tax strategy um, around that area. You, you have to be careful. There are sip, there are there, there. so <clears throat> you have to be you have to be careful. If if so, if you are using okay, let's say that because you have to be careful. If you have a physical um, office, right, that is separate from your home, then you can do that. There's a tax, there's a tax strategy around that area. But if you are solely working from home, right, and you don't have an office somewhere, then unfortunately you cannot do that. You need to be claiming the home office deduction. And I would recommend you use the actual expenses method, right? The actual expenses method means that what? You are going to look at all your utilities. You are going to look at the, the, the mortgage. You are going to look at the um, all those expenses that you incur on, you know, running your home. And then you are going to claim those expenses and the business is going to claim a portion of that. That's uh, the home office deduction. But however, like this is my office. Let's say I paint my entire office, which I did last year. I re do some repairs, do some things in my office, and 100% of those expenses will be a tax write-off, right? Does that answer um, um, your question? Right. Somebody says, can so Marcial, Marcial lose? Uh, did I answer your question? Right, so let's see here. It says, you guys are keeping me here for long. So we're going to round up in five minutes, right? It took longer than I expected. <laughs> right, so let's see here. And who, who is having fun? There you go. So that's the Augusta rule, right? That's the Augusta rule. So yes, you you can, if, if you only have an office in your house, you don't have an, an, an office out there, you, 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 you can use that. Because it's really for people who are, you know, who have offices and then they are claiming part of their, you know, Yes, we can use the Augusta rule. So let's see here who, who's who's having fun. <laughs> right. So nurse Ty says, can you still file a business for multiple um if you are not making much income from the business? Uh, can you rephrase the question? I'm struggling to understand. Say, can you see file for a business for multiple if you're not making much income? Um, ca can you please rephrase it? I'm struggling to understand, right? Yes, so if, if, if your business is making a loss, you have to file a tax return, right? Remember, this is to your benefit. Oh, you say for, for file for, of course, one of my businesses has been making loss for three years, <laughs> right? 
remember you you have wealthy people who have many businesses you you have to use businesses to 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 your advantage so if you have if you have if you have multiple businesses and one of your businesses is making a loss for three years for four years yes you can file a loss <laughs> right i've done it <laughs> so it works you can use it to your advantage it works <laughs> right it works so you can keep making losses for but you have to be careful though you because there are certain things you, you don't just keep making 50,000 60,000 losses every year you are going to get audited right or increase your chances of an audit <laughs> so you have to be careful look let me let me just kind of help you guys out here you have to make sure that whatever expenses you are claiming you, you 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 can prove them are you are you understanding so if, if 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 you have expenses to prove that you've been making a loss for 10 years yes why not if you have multiple businesses that explains why you you've been supporting these businesses i'll be making a loss for 10 years so you, there shouldn't be any problem <laughs> so uh, um, so let's see here. He says, is it necessary to put my home in a real estate LLC in order to claim rental income from the property I own? Um, remember, whatever you have to, whatever you're doing, you need to look at it from a, what is the tax benefit of, of that strategy, right? If you have a home, right, and you put the home in your L you, you put it in your LLC and then you 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 are claiming rent right so what <laughs> so let me let me see if I can actually if I understand the question so you put your home um right you put your home you put it uh, on your LLC now you, you <laughs> and then you rent it what's the tax benefit in, in doing that right because you are going to pay the rent to the llc i mean i don't see the i don't really see the tax benefit in doing that right if you have a primary residence because at the end of the day you need to live somewhere right why would you want to take your after tax dollars that has already been taxed are you understanding your after tax dollars and pay your llc so that your llc declares is an income and then you, that's that's not a, a strategy that would work because you're using your after-tax dollars to pay rent to the LLC and that L, that income becomes taxable. So you just converted after-tax dollars to taxable income, which does not make any sense to me. Now you need a place to live, so you need to have a primary residence, and then you can get an investment property and put it uh, uh, through the LLC, right, and get tenants to live there. So that they can pay rent and then you can get the tax benefits depreciation and all those kind of things right um right so let's see any any other question any other question and the last last question of the day is, is is we need to stop now last question of the day please last last question of the day so who has that honor right so why is why somebody is thinking about it um so I want to thank you guys for joining. For those who are just joining now, like I said, um, if you have friends who are business owners, right, making over one hundred fifty thousand dollars, or who have tax liability of over thirty thousand dollars, get them to talk to me so that I can fix their tax position. I can show them how to use the powerful tax strategies. There are so many tax strategies. These things get they they, they get me excited. I love taxes, right? I love taxes. Thank God I never became a doctor as I as I was as I planned, as I wanted when I was younger. <laughs> I love taxes, right? So please, uh, you know, share my information with your friends and family members so that I can help them. And for those, I have to stop here because it's nine o'clock. I have other things to do, right? So I want to thank all those who've made it today. I'm going to take you guys on this journey. Everybody needs to be educated. So that everybody can benefit from all the powerful tax strategies right so you guys have a blessed Monday. i don't think um, who, who enjoyed today's session right who enjoyed today's session <laughs> awesome so um 
I want to thank you guys again and blessed, blessed week, blessed Sunday. Remember your goals. Start working on your goals. Without any goals, you are not going to achieve anything, right? Start working on your goals for 2024. If, if you've not started, started a business, your goal should be to have a business, right? Start working on your goals, right? And then see you guys next week. If you have a topic that you want me to talk about, we are going to, we are going to, we are going to talk about it. I'm going to bring tax strategies to the masses, right? There's so much to talk about. There's so much to cover as in terms of business, the write-offs and all those kind of stuff. So it's a journey, right? So um, you guys have a blessed Sunday. I will catch up uh, next week.